school classroom e fi o kokwe classroom e kokwe me abo yin wa ya mi si wa ya mi se o te so mo so mo ya no e balake o so fo williams ka fe baslawo baslawo ni ha o contribution e ya na ka ka fe wo leader si o kokwe won sa fo bibi o pe there was a time the government gave a, a law that churches should not be allowed in the classrooms and this actually made us to see that we leave the place. And with that, we have to set up a committee. I was the secretary of the committee. We started contributing some money until it came to the time that, uh, on the advice of uh, Pastor Bwedi, we should start the building. Koba obi anfa yi blog ba ko mira mena tele blog mena tele ne ke contribution fi o fi o fi o ta so bo di no be ni baba ile shin tu e ba ma shin 5 in binu sami ke apostle ni ate le bon nana aka cho ni apostle le mu aka a he so mu tu Apostle, I want so much more than one day. You watch it, but let you so be careful. You 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 be careful. Okay, me beka, in keka che me ba. Ni mi ni ni heleji ye po ni ami no ni ke ye na no na ba ke mi ne e wo ya no ami e wo ni ye che le ni e ke e ami te pe ni ke mi mi fin se don a ke a ka mi be ke bi ye si nyongo ni ne ye no ni. I'm a few of me. When this thing started, the Committee 5 Presbytery started yearning for an English service. The main thing was to get a service where the youth can be kept, a service where you wouldn't spend too much time. See, the normal apostolic church will go to church and then be in church for three, four, five hours, and they are still in church. But you know, intellectuals, they are people who value time, and they just want to do things on time, and, and go and do other things, or go back to work. So we wanted a service where things will be done in a time-conscious manner. Time will not be wasted. Things will be done purposefully. Um, so they started thinking about having such an English Assembly. The English service started actually in 1999 when Dr. Aaron had a vision. Though the concept started from the local assembly, the formation was an area initiative. It was Apostle Joe Burton who brought the area presbytery together said I wanted to start something like this. And that was when the first committee was formed to start it at Committee 5 because they were ready and it should be um, um, started under their presbytery, though a committee was formed to take charge of it. There were a lot of things there that needed to be changed, but we couldn't say much until the Lord brought in our current pastor, Iron Amina. I remember one meeting, that was when I was made the leader of the church. Then I was asking a lot of questions. And they, we had just acquired a little land behind us this way. All the land we had at that time was what the old temple was on. That was all the land. The rest of the land was in ours. But the presbytery tried and acquired a little of it that was at the back of it. And I told them that, please, let's rather 
put all these things that you want to do into one multi-purpose complex. We will have these offices, we will have this long room, but then it will have an expanded auditorium to be able to accommodate the kind of growth that we are expecting God to bring to his church. He started talking about demolishing the building in which we were worshiping to build a new one. But people questioned the whole idea. There was an opposition for having a multi-purpose complex, but there was a lot of opposition for, for pulling down the old structure. We want new things, but we can give up the old. He was determined to pull it down and build a new one. And that is when some of us were invited to join in. What made it easier for those who were opposing and other things to come on board was when we got the perspective of how the new temple will look like. And I think there's a very great lesson for leadership and vision. Once we were able to get that artist's impression of how the building will look like, and it was shown to them, I believe they began to desire something like that, and that helped them to give up the old so that they could have the new. And even at that time, Pastor Sampa, who handed over to me, was also there. But some way, somehow, they listened to a little boy. And I thank God that it happened that way. Before we came into leadership, we were burdened about certain practices in the church. We realized that when it was time to raise funds for any project, people outside will be invited. Sometimes people with um, religious affiliations that are opposite to what we believe. Men of God will be taken off the platform and these people will be placed there as chairpersons and supporters and what have you. And the whole service will be after money. And then they will donate. And that's how funds were raised. It burdened us that no, this system was wrong. So as soon as we came on board, we had to start teaching that, no, if we are a spiritual church, let us raise funds like that. Let us not go beg as if God is a beggar. God is not a beggar. Pastor that taught us financial prosperity and giving was very essential. So we were taught how to give to the work of God. And we decided to work from our resources, like serving God with our substance. So that was how we started. And it was difficult, very, very difficult. For somebody had to sell his car to invest in it. He was walking and sometimes hiring taxis. Some sold their lands later on to invest in it. Money wasn't easy to come by. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all, but as the teachings went on and people saw that we were actually doing the work with the monies they were contributing, they started giving. We decided that this building is our offering to God. We won't go asking for any money from anywhere. We will do it from our own resources. It's our offering to God. We had a lot of challenges as I've already said, from within. And then from without. Without is a huge resistance from property owners around the building. In fact, they teamed up and wrote letters to the Tema Development Corporation to stop us. They signed the letters. I saw the letters myself. And they did all they could to stop us. Uh, thank God. I had connections with TDC because I worked there for 10 years and resigned and I was made a member of the board of directors then. So I took up the challenge to go to the Tama Development Corporation 
to tell them the wisdom in what we were doing and the fact that they couldn't stop us. When we were just trying to put the dwarf wall there, we dug the trenches and they took us to TDC and they came and stopped us. It was the raining season and water collected in those trenches and mosquitoes were in those. And when we come to church, they'll come and they'll be biting us. They will tell you, It was really difficult. A lot of legal issues, but we fought them as spiritual issues. The temple has been one physical structure that has some way, somehow, driven the vision, some way, somehow. Because it gave people something to look at. It gave people something to, to do and to believe in, and the progress of it, okay? I can tell you that the temple itself is not as important to me as the kind of spirit or faith or passion it has brought into the apostolic church. I think that prayer has been the basis of the whole thing. The testimony is what we are seeing now. I mean, the greatest of it is the journey where God has brought us. We have many people from other apostolic assemblies just coming to see this gives them some faith that if one assembly can do this, we can also do it. It's making them believe in doing great things in the name of God. And for me, that value is higher than the structure itself. There are things that we think are scriptural that are not. There are things that we believe are apostolic, but they are traditions and cultural. Certain things were done for certain reasons during the times of our fathers. They didn't worship those systems. They did them because they were helpful, because there were situations on the ground that mandated that such things should be done. But we have inherited some of those things like idols. And though the reasons for doing them are gone, we still hold on to them like scripture when they are not. Culture is good, but whenever culture stands in the way of progress, no way. It must give way. The only thing we cannot change is what God has said. Scripture stays. Tenet stays. But practices, they can change. We are reckoned to be the largest single assembly in the Apostolic Church, okay, Ghana, and still growing. Okay? And so the results give credence to the systems and the approach being used. It's different from the rest of the church, but it doesn't undermine the core principles, the tenets that the church stands on. I think the leadership style is uncommon. One major thing I usually look out for and I see here is the fact that it is accountable to the people. That is rare, to have leadership open itself up, you know, to be, for want of a, word, a better word, let me say, to be judged by the people they serve. One thing that is clear, we've been able to, God has been able to raise leaders in this church. We need to raise more leaders. So we are going to have um, um, a leadership institute on the last floor of the building where we will have formal, I mean, um, 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 lectures to raise leaders. Right now we have a little over 500 children in the Sunday school. Our plan is to get to 1,500 in three years. A lot of people are drug addicts, drunkards, and we have this big edifice here. And we, this is a time for us to go into the society 
and bring them on board, bring them to Christ. So I think the next thing we have to venture into is radical evangelism. With the forming of this music department, we have had many of our young ones retained in the church. We have a youth choir where they feel very much at home and they're able to minister as youth. We have a children's ministry choir. We have a teen choir. And so we believe that the future is great for us as a church where people will not leave, but there will be a place for everybody who has been called into this ministry. We are so grateful to our Apostle Dr. Ronamina for his leadership. It's a visionary. We believe that revival is coming. I must say that we've crossed where the water was at the ankle. And I must say that we've got into where the water is at the knees. We need to get to the waist and get it overflowing. You see, because when the water gets to the overflowing level, you can't walk, you swim. We must swim in the things of the Spirit.